what's up everyone this is Joe shoes and I am back with another vintage masters of the universe unboxing I got some cool stuff in I'm really excited to open it up and I know I've been doing a lot of Motu origins lately but at heart I'm gonna be a vintage Motu guy so it's only fitting that we get back to it before we get started please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel that's always appreciated but without further ado, let's get into it. And I know when I usually do these vintage Motu unboxings, I'm usually surprised at what's in the box because sometimes I forget what I ordered. But today, I know exactly what we're going to be opening up. So we're gonna start with a box from my buddy, Brian Myers of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. If you check him out, youtube.com slash major pod network him and matt cardona did a toy hunt video at a place in long island and he saw this on the shelf hit me up and he said do you need this i'll pick it up for you and i said absolutely please do this is a mint in box vintage masters of the universe battle bones battle bones now this is seal obviously there is wear and tear on the box but that's to be expected with a lot of these boxes you know the flap is surprisingly good for what it is but take a look at this box and this is one of the biggest things i love about this line i absolutely love the artwork and the photos they use on the accessories, the play sets, the, the box artwork on these old masters vehicles and everything else is just so awesome and I absolutely love it. Battle Bones was a dinosaur type skeleton that has a bunch of hooks on the side that you are able to pop your figures on and use it as a carrying case for your Motu figures, you know, for travel. And the jaw opens so you can store your weapons in there. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to be opening this. It is still sealed, but it is cool to have and it's very long, so I don't even know where I'm going to put it. An awesome scene right there with the heroic warriors in the forefront, all clipped into the side of the battle bones on the back. You've got some of the figures. You've got Castle Grayskull, the Dragon Walker, a couple vehicles. Everything is so cool. I just absolutely love this artwork, and this will be a great addition to my vintage collection. Uh, I do have a few boxes uh, from vehicles and play sets, but this is the first thing I have that's still factory sealed, and I'm really excited about that. I, I've always liked sealed toys because big time because of masters and because of how cool the artwork is and i really appreciate it and that's one of the big reasons i'm a mint in box mint on card collector even though i have been opening a lot of figures lately so battle bones welcome to the collection and now we'll move into a couple figures that i picked up in some auctions from our friends at eternia dreams i've spoken about them before some of the best prices the best looking figures that you could hope to find in the Motu realm. This one box has two figures. The first one, a vintage Stratos. Stratos with his arm wings, his red jet pack. Stratos is one of those guys, very integral, early character, basically in everything. This one looks pretty good. A little dusty around the face. Face has a little wear, but otherwise in good condition. Legs are pretty tight. The arm joints are pretty tight. All in all, this is a really cool Stratos. And I've always liked Stratos because he could fly. Like as a kid, I thought that was so cool. He had the colorful arm accessories. He could fly. Like Stratos was always really cool to me. So I'm happy to finally have a Stratos in my collection. 
And the last one in this box. This is a bit of a banger. I said there was going to be some good stuff in here, and I wasn't lying. This is a Flying Fists He-Man. It was a deluxe figure toward the end of the Masters of the Universe line. Flying Fist, he has a little notch on his back where you can turn him, and that would make him punch. So you would twist his waist and there's a mechanism that makes the arms punch back and forth. You would put this on him and it would be used as a weapon because his punches are so ferocious. And then he's got his shield. This was a, a bit more expensive. He does have some wear uh, on his armor. It is not in perfect condition, but it is in really good condition. This is a pretty hard figure. I, don't, I shouldn't say pretty hard, but it is a little bit on, more on the expensive side than a lot of the other figures. Um, opportunity came up. A lot of times when I do these Facebook auctions, there are a lot of people in there. And this just happened to be one of the times where the auction was not so populated and I was able to get this figure without the bidding going too crazy. So I was able to jump on it and add a Flying Fist He-Man to the collection. It is not complete, but I've got the two biggest pieces for me, and I could always hunt down another accessory. Um, I'm not going for the greatest collection ever, I'm just going to a collection I'm happy with, and I'm really happy to have a Flying Fist He-Man now. And without further ado, we go to the final box today. This one is gonna have three figures. At first, I really only thought I would be purchasing one of them. And then things started to happen. Something became available. The auction was, once again, not as full as normal. I wasn't bidding against as many people as I am used to bidding against. This was from, again, Eternia Dreams, who got a very, very great collection in from that they had picked up. So the first one that we have here is Mosquito. And Mosquito was released toward the end of the line. He does have his gun. And the pump action still works. So the blood that he sucks out of his victims still pumps out of his chest. He has his weapon. Mosquito is somewhat expensive compared to a lot of the other figures, much in the same way that Flying Fist He-Man is. It's not going to break the bank, but it's a bit pricier than some of the others. And this one is a really good condition. Like I said, the chest action still works, which it doesn't on a lot of these figures. You have to remember we're, we're nearing 40 years old that, you know, for this line already. So to get one that still works and is in good condition, very limited paint wear on this, I couldn't be happier to finally have a mosquito in my collection. And then that's where things got a little hairy. Because I said, you know what? I got my Mosquito. That's probably all I'm going to buy today. And then two figures came up that, to be honest, I thought was probably going to be half. I thought they were going to have to be left till the very end of my collection because they're exceptionally pricey. And to be honest, I never thought I'd be in a position to, to buy these figures. They're expensive. And, you know, when I started collecting Vintage Masters of the Universe, I, I actually never expected to begin collecting Vintage Masters of the Universe. From a pure financial standpoint, I never thought I'd be able to. So that's why I started collecting things like the reaction figures from Super 7, because I figured that would be the things I could hang on to and the things I could afford in lieu of 
the pricier vintage stuff that I really thought was outside of my realm. And then I got started and now I haven't stopped. And as we go on and I keep filling more and more holes in my collection, there comes a point where you have to either keep going, go big, or go home. And with these two, I decided to go real big. These are two very, very rare figures. Once again, from the end of the line, I believe it's wave six, which is one of the final waves. And these are Rotar and Twistoid. Now, they're not well known. It's not like they were integral parts of the Master Series. They weren't even in the Filmation Series. The, everything had kind of died off by the time these figures came out. And the line was already dying, and that, that's what makes them so rare, especially to get them with accessories like I have here. Got my Twistoid stuff and my Rotar stuff. And as far as I know, and I don't claim to be the all-time expert on Masters of the Universe, it is just something I really, really like and really, really enjoy. And it's, I've been a fan for as far back as I can remember. But as far as I know, both these characters were only in a couple of the old mini comics. Rotar himself was actually a member of the Eternian Royal Guard who was critically injured during battle. Man at Arms was able to keep him alive by making him a uh, half cyborg using some machine that he had built. That machine was later stolen by Skeletor and he created the counterpart Twistoid. So you had the evil Twistoid to go up against the heroic Rotar. And they are uh, tops and they're supposed to be able to spin really, really fast and that way they can dizzy their opponents. These were a lot of money. I didn't expect ever to be in a position to buy these. And let's just say it right here. Originally, no one else was bidding on them. And they were up for about $7.50 for the pair. And I said, oh, no one's bidding. $7.50, I know it's a lot of money, but I also know it's a pretty good price to get them with accessories. At the last minute, someone put in another bid for like $800. And I came in at the very last second before the buzzer and bid $810 to finally win these. Because I figured if I was in for that much, I, m I might as well go for an another couple of bucks. There is some slight paint wear on them, but like I said, to get them, to get them both with the accessories is, I mean, that's hard, man. And as far as the faces and the coloring on the bodies, everything looks really, really good. I mean, these are super clean. They, they look great in anyone's collection, but to have them in mine is, Sometimes I can't put it into words. Like I never, when I started putting this collection together and it was slow and it's been slow, it's, you know, piece by piece, maybe one here, one there. Sometimes I get a couple like you've seen in the other videos if you wanna go back in the archives and watch them. You know, like I'll, sometimes I'll get like 10 figures at a time, but for the most part, they're all relatively price controlled figures. A lot of times I'm getting figures for 12 bucks, 14 bucks, and it makes it affordable to get a couple, but I really never thought I would be in a position to pick up two figures like these, which I always just figured I would have to either wait until the very end or I just wouldn't get it all. Like, would I really feel like my collection was incomplete if I didn't have these figures? Not necessarily. Like I said, it's not like they're major characters in the universe, but they exist and they're out there and I would know that I don't have them. So someone coming over who would just look at my collection probably wouldn't notice, but I would know. And when, when you collect something and you wanna have a complete collection, sometimes you have to make those big boy purchases. And this was exactly that. This was a big boy purchase. I can't believe I'm actually holding them in my hands as we speak. Like I said, it's one of those things 
I just never thought I'd be in a position to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to be in that position where I can spend $800 on two old action figures, but it's kind of surreal to, like, I knew I did it. It's just surreal to actually have them and be like, wow, like, you know, I almost feel like I'm successful in a way that, you know, that I was able to do this. So really cool. Just to wrap up, we got a Rotar and Twistoid. Unbelievable. We've got a Flying Fist He-Man. Once again, another figure that I would have gotten at some point. I didn't really expect to get it kind of this soon, but I'm happy it became available and I just happened to be right place, right time and got it at a good price. Stratos, gotta have a Stratos. I mean, Stratos is a main Masters of the Universe character at some point. I don't know why I didn't have one already, but now I do. And Mosquito, who I always felt was such a cool figure, the blood pumping action in his chest was, I, I mean, as a kid, that's so cool, especially as a kid in the 80s. Like, there, you didn't have a lot of these functions that, you know, that toys today have, but like something like that was just so awesome and so different and so unique that it made Mosquito such a cool figure. And I was really happy now to put him in my collection. He can hang out with the rest of the horde now. So that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. Once again, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support even further, go into the description, maybe buy one of my shirts to help keep this going, share it with your friends, and we'll be back soon with more of these. So thank you for coming by. Until next time.